I'm presenting in the spotlight on CLL patient experience session. Um, and one of the things that I'm talking about is a really exciting collaborative project that's been run between Leukemia Care, um, CLL Support, and the UK CLL Forum. So it's a patient organization and clinician joint initiative to look at the CLL patient experience during COVID. Um, and as part of this project, we ran five patient surveys from May 2020 through to March 2021. Um, each of those had over 800 responses and a total of about 4,630. Um, so we got a good insight into the experience of CLL patients at different stages of the pandemic. Uh, the first few of those surveys were trying to understand the impact of the first lockdown. So um, kind of at the beginning of it, um, afterward, at the end of it and then afterwards, understanding how that impact on people um, at home, the impact of shielding, and then some of the latter surveys were looking at anticipation of future lockdowns in November, right before we went into the second lockdown in the UK, um, and what CLL patients' worries were, were about that. Uh, and then the fifth survey looked at um, views on vaccinations and kind of people's looking back um, at their views on, on the unlocking of society and how they felt about um, what was termed Freedom Day uh, in the UK, um, which was definitely not Freedom Day for people affected by CLL many of whom are obviously still shielding. Um, lots of really interesting insights from that, um, which enabled uh, clinicians to look at the kind of areas of concerns for CLL patients, how they could change working practices and provide additional support to those that needed it. Um, but beyond this, it's also a really a good example of how patient organisations and the clinical community can work together on projects like this to make sure we're looking at the outcomes and the issues that are most important to patients, not just the clinical issues. Issues. Some of the key findings that came out of that project were we looked at how well informed um, patients were about about COVID with a quite high level of kind of information being received. Charities were the primary source of information. Um, it was the first go-to for many of the CLL patients who were responding. We also found that there were incredibly high rates of shielding among the CLL community in the UK, uh, over 93%. Um, and particularly through the first lockdown, um, people were shielding very strictly with two thirds leaving home for the permitted reasons, but not for other reasons. So mostly to exercise. Um, and about a third of them were attending medical appointments where requested to do so, but very few patients, less than 10%, were leaving the house to go shopping. Um, they were shielding very, very strictly. Um, what we found was that the majority of medical appointments took place remotely and primarily via telephone. Um, and we found that that was something that CLL patients had very mixed views on, um, but a high proportion of them, 56%, wanted a say in what their care models would be for the future. So it wasn't a case of just continue with virtual appointments going forward or return to all in person. Um, most people wanted a choice going forward. Um, one of the interesting things as well that came out of the project was that relatively few people in a clinical survey that we ran alongside this, only about 4% actually went on to develop COVID. Um, so for about 44 patients. And of those, only 12 were admitted to hospital. Um, and one of the most interesting things that came out of that was in the hospitalized group of CLL patients, over 50% of them had chosen not to shield compared to 93% who shielded in the patient survey. So we saw the impact shielding had on protecting CLL patients. Um, and the last thing that we saw that was really, really interesting was the high uptake of the COVID vaccine. So in the patient survey, 99% um, of the CLL patients survey surveyed had chosen to be vaccinated, which is obviously incredibly high uptake um, and shows how well informed these patients had been by the, the patient community and obviously their clinical experts um, and encouraged quite rightly, in my view, to get the uh, COVID vaccine and ensure they have all protection that they could get. We also saw um, the, the impacts that shielding was having on CLL patients, um, high rates of isolation um, and medical health needs, um, much of which was not receiving professional support. Um, from a charity perspective, we've seen more requests for help than we have done previously um, at a time when the sector was obviously struggling um, with lots of things not able to happen in person. The needs of the people that the charity sector were here to support were more needed than they've ever been before. And obviously, that's where charities like Leukemia Care and CLL support really stepped up to the mark to make sure that patients had the support they needed when shielding. Um, think quotes like, you're the only person I've been able to speak to this week, um, or I only have you to speak to about this really showed the value 
value of patient organisations to uh, people when they were shielding and particularly shielding very strictly. Um, and that need has only really increased over the last few months with society unlocking and in some cases returning to near normal, um, which is totally different experience than what many with CLL who may still be shielding strictly might be experiencing currently.